There was a request on the discussion board for me to walk through this week's assignment and demonstrate how it works. I won't show any code in this lecture, but what I will do is walk through exactly how the to-do application uh, should work. Now, this is my interpretation of the assignment, so yours might look a little bit differently. Um, you don't ever have to implement things exactly the way I do. So my program's running, and I'm using JGRASP as my IDE. And so you'll notice that I have my default menu appearing here, and these letters in brackets are the letters on the keyboard that I will press to um, trigger those specific actions. So if we press the letter P first, you'll notice that my to-do list is empty. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add an item by pressing A. At this point, I'll be put into some interactive prompts where I can uh, add some to-do items. So first is my description. Second is the date uh, by which this uh, item will be due. And I'm going to have that separated by spaces. It just makes it a little more compact. So we'll do this on the 7th of July uh, 2014. Uh, the object I'm using to manage my date uh, is zero based in terms of counting the months. If I wanted to, I could um, change that, kind of let the user enter 1 through 12 and just subtract 1. But you know, this is not the greatest interface. It's more just to uh, get the program running. So those types of little details I don't expect you to, to um, worry about in your programs. It's okay to tell the user, hey, um, January is month zero. So I'm going to hit enter. And the next option I'm going to get is to enter a priority for my item. And one of the things in the assignment is that you should have an overloaded method that allows the user to enter the priority as an int or a string. Now, you don't have to do this the way I did this. Um, I'm doing this as a demonstration. In your program, it's acceptable to only allow the user to enter items as an int or only enter items as a string. As long as you have the method that is overloaded in your program uh, or in your class, uh, that I just need to see the code. But in my case, I wanted to make it work interactively. So I'm going to type I for int. And now I'll enter my priority as an int. We'll make this a 1, high priority. And now if I print my list, there's my item. So you'll notice that it's index 0 in my list. This will be an X or not to toggle that this is complete. Here's my description. Here's my priority, and here's my due date. So let's add um, another item. And for this one, I will put running in. I don't like running. So I'll say I want to do that on uh, the 9th of the ninth month, 2014. And um, this time, I'm going to enter my priority as a string. So I'll do S. And for my priority, I'll type medium. And now if we print, you'll notice that uh, my run to do item got priority two, which is medium. So the first thing that I can do here is I can toggle one of these items completed. So let me type T, and I will toggle the running item complete. And now if I print it, you'll notice that and there's an X in my toggle completed. And it's a toggle because I can turn it off. Okay, so I can turn that on and off. And so where do the, each of these items come from? So before we delete anything, please note that these items are both to-do objects, to-do item objects. So this is the second to-do item object, and the item at index 0 is the first. And each one of these objects contains a, um, information about whether or not it is or isn't complete, a description, a priority, and the date it's due. And these indexes over here on the left, 0 and 1, well, these indicate the indexes of the array where each of these objects are stored. So as I read the data in, I'm creating an instance, or I'm creating an object of the um, data type to-do item, the class that you need to write, the custom to-do item class. So there are two custom to-do item objects, and they are stored in an array. And this is at index 0. This is at index 1. So I will delete one of these items. Let's delete getting milk, so index 0. And if I print it, now it's gone. And notice that the item that was, was at index 1 moves up to index 0. And that's because I'm using an array list uh, to manage all of these items. So that's the general process for how this works and a little bit of a description of what's going on under the hood with this assignment. Uh, one of the things I'm not doing in this program is any type of exception handling. Uh, I'm really not even scrubbing uh, input. I mean, one of the things you'll notice is if I add a new item and, um, um, I don't know, paint house, let's say, and if I you know enter something really wrong, like 
2022, 2014, uh, or I enter an int that's too high, let's say I enter nine, um, you'll notice that first of all, the date object kind of realizes that this is an incorrect month and actually just adds 11 months. Notice it bumps that to um, 2015, so there's some error handling I could probably do there. And notice that since I entered an invalid um, integer priority, I just set it to one. So I'm doing some checking uh, in the object to make sure that the the um, that some values make sense, uh, but I'm not doing that in a robust uh, Java-like fashion. And we will learn more about exceptions later on in the semester. So for now, it's okay to um, if something occasionally breaks your program, um, you know, and uh, it's related to needing to handle exceptions. That's not something that would get marked off. If you have any questions about any of these items or how to um, or just in general about the assignment please don't hesitate to post to the discussion board thanks